Hey, Rick Beaniacs, welcome back to another Friday sit rep. Uh, just like last Friday, we have a ton to get to this time around. Um, so without further ado, we're gonna head into the design room and check in with the designers a little bit and see what Brickmania was up to this week. Okay, so here we are at the desk of Mary Wilson, who is clearly uh, diving head first into Great War Month because she's got three different World War I tanks and a World War II tank sitting on her desk, but it's St. Charmant week. What are we looking at here, Mary? What, what, what is going on here? <laughs> All right, the St. Charmant. I had so much fun building this. It was really cool to get all of those angles in there because sure. I wanted it to be as accurate as possible and there's just so many angles on this thing. It is an interesting <laughs> looking thing to say the least, that's for sure. I love the color scheme first off, but my goodness is the is the chassis small for everything that's going on in the hall. Like, holy smokes. For sure, a, a funky tank that got stuck a lot, but <laughs> <laughs> pretty interesting. But yeah, still definitely one of the uh, the more interesting pieces to be involved in uh, World War One. So what do we got going on here? Looks like we've got some side-mounted machine guns. we got a little 75 in the front. Yeah, um, there's actually four mounted uh, hash kisses on this, except mm -hmm. we're missing two of them. There, but there's one in the front and one on either side, one on okay. the back. Um, and then we've got um, hatches for most of your crew. I think it actually holds nine, but oh, we've wow. got... So lots of room in the hull if you want to load it up. Yeah. <laughs> and so you could get your minifigs in there uh, to like hold on to the hash kiss so they could aim. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, like stick them in the in the top of the hatches, which I've seen pictures of all of the all of the crew like with their heads poking out. Yeah, right. It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Definitely a unique model and a unique yeah. tank. Uh, so this is available on pre-order right now on BrickMania.com. Let's move over to one of the other new releases we have too, another addition to Micro Brick Battle. The IS-2 looking awesome with that printed element right there on the turret. This is kind of a unique Micro Brick Battle build. Uh, for those of you who get the instructions, it comes together kind of cool. Yeah. it's Honestly, it's been so long since I've worked on this. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, I suppose. Um, but I'm loving the... The tiny little polar bear. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. We just love it. We're awesome to have it a part of the Micro Brick Battle lineup. And it is there on BrickMania.com right now. We also have the Mark V, which this is looking absolutely awesome. Still in its prototype phase, I would assume. But yeah. uh, what, what are we looking at here, Mary? Um, I mean, it's currently missing a few parts. Mm -hmm. But uh, I just did a whole update of it, just checking all of the parts. So it's um, up to date and still affordable. Uh, some of those dark tan pieces got pretty expensive over yeah, the years, I can so, um, but we're missing some of the brick arms, which, I mean, the barrel would really make this look a lot better in my opinion. Sure. <laughs> but, um, yeah, made those updates and decided just to go with the male version just because the, I wanted it to be affordable so people who wanted it could get it. Um, but, yeah, I'm just looking at that. That is going to be another awesome addition to the Great War lineup. You can look for this one on pre-order next Friday. Mary, thank you so much for checking in. Of course. Hey, Brennan, guess what? What? It is Air Crobo Week, which means your first Brick Mania kit is finally hitting the store shelves, and it's going to start shipping out for the people who got it on pre-order, and you've got one on your desk. I do. What kit number is it? Uh, I believe 47. 47. Well, you got to pick up one of your own kits, especially your first one that you designed for Brick Mania. Are you pretty excited about that? I'm so excited about this, and I'm so excited just to see what you guys think of this. Because <laughs> I've seen some of the comments on the YouTube videos, and it's like, it, it's very encouraging, very nice to hear. Um, I just hope I meet expectations. <laughs> so I'm sure you will, man. This thing looks like it was absolutely knocked out of the park. You want to run through it real quick? Yeah. Uh, it, this was a, originally a personal project. Worked over roughly a year or so. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the last few months of its production, it was like, hey, Bell actually called. We actually got the license you can start using this as an actual kit. So I kind of rounded out the edges, so it's got this very sleek look to it now, or much more sleek look than yes, it Yes, the bullet plane. Yes. Um, got some awesome printing going on here with the uh, fuel caps on the wings, carburetor intake on the back here, and this beautiful gun sight. Thank you, pr uh, Printing, for that. <laughs> There's a lot of work for them. Um, Amazing little aircraft, and and uh, yeah, I almost forgot the stickers here. Yep, a couple of different kinds. You can do actually three different variations of this plane, depending on the stickers you use, and then obviously there's printed elements and a pilot. We'll go over it a little bit more in Brennan's designer's desk. Otherwise, congratulations, man. Thank you. All right, and for stop number three, we're here at Landon's desk because we have not one, but two awesome figures out and available right now on BrickMania.com, provided they're 
still there. <laughs> but these look great. We have a new perfect caliber as well. Which one do you want to start with, Lando? Uh, we got Captain Red up here, so let's start with All that. All right, cool. Um, so initially, this is just kind of one of these Soviet naval peacoats and not a whole lot of like design elements, elements to it. Um, but I wanted to kind of see if I could capture some more detailing here. So I'm, I'm working a lot with shadows, which is this a lot of experimentation. Um, I hadn't quite done something like this. This is almost, um, I don't know, maybe more like a comic book inspiration, I guess, in some of the il illustra stylized. Yeah, sure. illustrative properties of it. So simple minifigure. I think he looks pretty slick along with that uh, really cool Shanka there with the uh, metal up top. Um, yeah, just a cool figure to add to your collection. So then next up, yes, we have Lady Death. Um, and let's get a little look around the figure here. Equally deadly and seductive. Yes. Um, we have this 3D printed, uh, really awesome cover here along with the uh, hair um, done by Amanda here in-house. Uh, really awesome sculpt The push here. forward, holy smokes. Just the way it sits is so natural and, and yeah, really, really captured that look. Yeah, and going off some source imagery here um, on the screen up there, uh, you know, obviously these are kind of propaganda pictures, but I think it kind of shows off how um, just that, you know, it's got that, that perfect hat tilt to it. Um, and then also the, the camouflage outfit there, that's the Soviet Amoeba camouflage, um, which I have here on the, uh, on the minifigure. I'm trying to replicate as best I can. So I've done a previous version of this. Um, I'm playing around here with more color mixing, uh, so kind of using that substrate color of that Lego dark tan, adding a hint of green to that to sort of get it that, to that more vibrant color than mm -hmm. we saw the original uniforms. Um, and then those amoeba blotches, uh, just trying to dial in that um, dark brown color. Uh, on the uh, Mosin, obviously that nice wood grain all over. Um, and so this is, yeah, Mosin Nagant, with that scope on top, the major difference that I found would be on that bolt handle is there is a significant bend to it compared to the standard scopeless version, just so that just so that handle wouldn't bump into that scope. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, and then obviously the scope on top uh, to complete that sniper package. Awesome looking, perfect caliber. Um, but overall, it's a really slick. Uh, both of these figures were, fun, were really fun to make, so. Yeah. Yeah. The kickoff of Red October, some of the new releases finally showing up, and here is your first set of minifigs. Uh, Landon, you uh, you certainly outdid yourself to start off the month. Thank We're you. excited to see what you have coming up next. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and for our final stop, it's Friday, so of course we got to visit the Cabana because we've got some awesome stuff that we've been uh, kind of tracking through social media this week. What are we looking at here, Dan? Uh, these are a pair of SC5s. So SC5A, I guess, would be the designation um, mm -hmm. there's a pair this is the newest one okay versus the original this is the, i did this earlier maybe i did it on the weekend even mm -hmm. um so i got the shape the size everything kind of down and then i decided i wasn't happy with it because there were still certain rough edges on here and like the fact that you could really see the, the tan i i wanted to make it so we could print all the all the rondelles rondelles on it oh okay um so I, I tried to put you know basically go edge to edge with the tiles it's possible we could print it, but it just doesn't overall. It just doesn't look as refined as our as our what is our standards. Sure. So I set this one aside, mm -hmm. built this new new version, which has the curved slopes, um, makes it a little bit more uh, I guess costly for lack of a better word. It's gonna it's gonna cost a little more uh, for the parts. Put a more accurate shape. Yeah, it looks a lot better, a lot more streamlined. I was able to even get the fuselage a little bit thinner. Uh, it's a really skinny aircraft. In fact, you can see that the pilot just fits in there. Wow. And uh, they actually had to make some, I was reading up on this thing, and it was so narrow that they were they were like having problems fitting pilots into these things. So they, <laughs> For the little guys, the pilot jockeys. Right. So they actually did some interesting things like cut out part of the side panels of the aircraft so oh, the guy wow. could have his elbows sticking out of the, the cockpit a little bit out of the fuselage or else just... Uh, Make bulges for the, the guy to sit in. Mm -hmm. um, two guns as, as a Lewis gun on top, Lewis gun air, which we, I don't think we've. I've never put on a kid. I, I, I bet you we've done it before. Sure. Um, and then there's the the Vickers gun underneath. Mm -hmm. um, interesting that this one, the propeller actually spins clockwise on this. 
on oh. this aircraft. I was looking at like, oh, I'll just go grab a, some printed parts that we've used in previous things, and up oh, the propeller spinning the wrong, they're facing the wrong direction. So. <laughs> Got to redo that one. Yeah, yeah so sure. I have to do a new printed element for that. So we'll do stickers for all the rondelles. So you will, you you know, I still have on the prototype here this flat surface we could apply stickers to. Mm -hmm. I might get rid of it. You don't really need it because okay. you can just use on you know, plates. That's just going to add some more cost. So still in its prototype phase. Absolutely. I, I'm thinking of different camouflages for this. Um, the dark, the, the actual planes were delivered in dark green with tan. The under under wings were tan. Mm -hmm. The plane was dark green, like a olive dark green. Okay. Uh, you can't get that. It's just not a Lego a Lego color. The, the Lego olive is just too light and mm -hmm. doesn't have. We don't have the right part combinations to, to do it. So, uh, considering doing, they had a, there's there's a couple different uh, camouflages that were used by different units for like ground attack. Um, that would be like a green or brown sure. uh, splotches. So I'm looking at at some of those. Uh, I might just go with something like this, which would represent the, the kind of the basic configuration. Considering changing it to dark tan as well, so that might be another another option. Well, there um, you go, Brick Maniacs. You've heard a little bit about what he's thinking, so get to the comments and uh, <laughs> let us know what you want to see. Yeah, this one's going into production in about a week, so I have to, I have to get it finalized. Great more War Month chugs on. Dan, thank you very much for yeah, checking in. No problem. So the vibes from the design room kind of tell me that this is the convergence of the start of Great War Month oh, with yeah. the pre-orders, and also Red October is still within full swing because we're getting the actual stuff that's coming out in Red October. We know this is P39 week. Brennan's super excited about that. Of course, he had to pick up one of his own kits. I had to. Yeah, I'm sure you picked up the first minifigure that had your name I on did. it, right? Yeah, yeah. probably. What Somewhere. was it? Do you remember? Was it the Marine? Marine? A U.S. Marine, I think, was the first one. That's pretty cool. Yeah. P39 is pretty cool to have your first kit, too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's so, really excited to, to watch that kind of process come from a beginning to end. Mm -hmm. So, sneak peek there uh, in the, in the check-ins. The designer's studio video will have to be approved by Bell, so it'll be a little bit uh, still before we're able to get that one up and off the ground. <laughs> Airplane joke. Um, but that'll be inbound, and you'll get to hear a little bit more about uh, Brennan's design process. Um, let's go into our special here real quick. We do have a cool thing going on. So starting now uh, in the themed months, now that Red October is officially underway, uh, the Brickmania instruction books that coordinate to the theme of that month will be $15 off. Whoa. So you can scoop up Operation Barbarossa right now on BrickMania.com for $15 off. You can take advantage of that all month. We'll try to keep them uh, in stock as much as we can. And then come Great War Month, the Great War, Great War Volume 1 and Great War Volume 2 books will be $15 off. And Dan is going to bring back the add-on packs so that you can make like Liberty Truck, some of the aircraft, etc. in there, those Brick Arms pack, the AV, A7V, I think is one of them too. Um, so a couple of those packs that haven't been around or available uh, in recent times will return and be available as part of the monthly theme specials, which is pretty cool. That is really cool. Yeah. 15 bucks off. Get yourself a lot of models. Oh, wow. All those right there. And that's, you see uh, them? All those models. You can build them. If you were to build those all... <laughs> That's quite a little little battle going on there. So yeah, no kidding. I mean, it is. It will be the the highlights of Operation Barbarossa, which is what those books are intended to be. So that'll be that'll be really really cool. Definitely one to get. And like I said, we'll have a bunch of them in stock throughout the month. Uh, so hopefully you'll be able to get your hands on there. Fifteen dollars off, month of October only. Um, before we get to all the mentions and stuff, let's do one more run through of everything that we had this week. So the Saint Charmand, as Mary was talking about, along with her Micro Brick Battle IS2, uh, is this week's new pre-order slash new Micro Brick Battle release, um, which is awesome. This thing is crazy. It looks, let's sleek it. Let's make it a little sleeker here. A little sleeker. So this is the opening Close and closing hatches the... model. Just clarification. Yep. I it is the opening uh... and closing hatches model for those of you who tuned in last time. Yes. But yes, there we are. The Charmond. Charmond. <laughs> the Charmond. My favorite tank. Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I love this camo scheme. Comes with a cool uh, French tanker. Um, is going to have room for additional minifigs uh, in the interior. A bunch of printed elements, etc. Uh, this is very heavily still in its prototype phase. Literally just got to put together. But there you are. There you have it, you Battlefield players or you fans of early World War I French infantry. We have the Saint Charmond. That's really cool. Glad you like it. Um, we also have those two figures that you covered, Lady Death and Captain Red. I love the new Captain Red. It is a V2, I think, technically, on both of these figures, as we covered at Landon's desk. Yes. That was fun. Those, mm -hmm. these were, uh, this is um, coming into the studio today was the first time I saw these in person, so 
that's cool. Yeah. I was excited. Lady Death looks awesome. Love that perfect caliber to go with it. Minifigs that have the 3D printed headpiece to add detail and a perfect caliber to go with them. Bees knees. I'm just saying. I love that combo. It's awesome because you get something that is truly Lego, but you also get something that is unique to that figure because it's got a headpiece. And then you get to take a brick arm, which is already awesome, bring in that extra detail. And before you know it, you're just like, you got an absolutely eye popping piece where people are like, where did you, because clearly you didn't make that. Where did you get that? Yeah. They got it from us, which is cool. Nugget. Nugget's hand injecting stuff. <gasps> is that what you've been doing? Printing. Are you off the table? Are you Whoa. a 3D printer? Whoa. No. Mm -mm. No, I just sit here and look cute for these sit reps. Um, okay, so now that we've kind of covered everything that we have release wise, let's go through some of the rundowns here. Uh, so, first things first, we are still running that Wounded Warrior fundraiser. It does end on November 11th, which is Veterans Day 2020. Uh, we're asking for all your help, your donations, etc., moving forward. This is a huge month for us. Uh, we've cracked the 1,000 mark. We still have 5,000 to go. Uh, so, it's going to be an uphill climb, uh, but we need you guys' help. Uh, we'll be doing what we can too. Stay on the lookout for uh, some promotions, some fun stuff coming up here that'll be involved with the Wounded Warrior project. Um, but really anything that you guys can do on your end to make sure that we can get that LCAC off to the Navy and just help out veterans and their families uh, would be greatly appreciated. So thank you to those of you who have already reached out and offered support and we ask that uh, those of you who have not consider it and, uh, and jump in for a good cause. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, moving more so onto the production side of things. So had a meeting with Dan earlier this week, uh, talking a little bit about heading into the holidays, uh, seeing what that's gonna look like. Um, one of the things we wanna make sure is that people around the holidays can get exactly what they want for Christmas, you know, or for their gifts for whatever they want. Um, this means that we need to alter our batches a little bit. Instead of doing four batches of, or instead of doing four kits at batches of 100, we're going to try to do eight kits at batches of 50, or six kits at whatever, at batches of 50, et cetera. Um, so there will be fewer amounts of certain kits available, but a larger variety of kits available online. Um, and so that is going to be our goal heading forward from literally now moving through Christmas and then possibly beyond. Yeah, let's try and uh, cover all of our bases, make sure everybody gets a little bit of what they want. Mm -hmm. I think it's just because we have a lot of Modern stuff, a lot of World War II stuff, people are asking for some World War I stuff, and then there's Cold War, Vietnam, etc. cetera. Uh, we're obviously doing these themed months where people can get what they want, but heading into the holidays, we know it's a time that people want to be able to get their hands on exactly what they're interested in. We think doing our production this way will help us have more available to look at not necessarily more of each one available. So basically what I'm saying is, if you see stuff coming up here that you absolutely have to have, remember that these batches, we're going to be spreading the love around a lot more and not necessarily focusing on getting large numbers of popular kits back in those specific ones. Make sense? Sure. Okay. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. We'll do our best to answer them. Um, moving forward with that again. So coming up on November 4th through the 11th, that is going to be the next Brickmania sale. So that'll be 15% off the 4th through the 11th for our Veterans Day. Um, promo code will be online, otherwise you can use it in stores. Throughout that week as well, if you are a United States military veteran, um, you can show up at one of our retail stores and you'll get a stackable 5% on top of that uh, with your proof of service, whatever you would show there to, you know, at a restaurant, etc. Um, and so that will get you 20% off for that week in those stores, which is definitely worth taking advantage of. Um, and then obviously plank owners online, if you're at that top tier, when you log on, that 5% is already added to that 15% when you put in the promo code. So you'll have 20% off online all week long as well. So it's like a long mad, mad minute sale for you guys. Um, plank owners who go to the stores with their figures, you must be present with your figure to get your stackable discounts. We can't be passing figures around to other people uh, to claim those discounts for people. So you gotta show up in person with your figure show it off, get your discount, stackable discounts. If you're a veteran, that'll stack on top of that. So there's a potential that you can save a lot, um, but you gotta make sure that you're going through the proper avenues to make sure you do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. Um, once again, that is the November That is November 4th through the 11th. Be 15% off online and in stores uh, for Veterans Day. Um, you noticed probably this morning that both of those figures had a 10-figure limit on them. Uh, that will be the same moving forward uh, with with the Modern Marine Rifleman and Army Rifleman coming on Monday, um, just more popular figures in the future, that is going to be a hard limit of 10. So I know in the past there was some confusion about like, well, if I order 10 and then I go back in and do another order, can I get another 10? No. Our customer service department will cancel that order. You can get 10 of each of the figures. That is the max purchase limit 
per day, whatever, for these batches of figures if they ever make it a day. Um, that's, that's just kind of how it works. So sorry for the confusion there, but we wanted to clear that up uh, just so everybody else understands. Another clear up that I wanted to make sure that we covered um, <clears throat> had some questions on brick tracks. We do not make brick tracks. Brick tracks are their own thing. We are a brick tracks reseller. So we are not 3D printing these brick tracks back in our 3D print magic shop. No. There's a lot of magic going on back there, but not, not in related to brick tracks at all, really. Um, so that is a separate company. They are made of uh, hand-injected ABS plastic. They are very, very high quality. So is the 3D print stuff, but regardless of which, the people who were a little like, I don't know if I want to drive my train on a 3D printed track, it's not. It's injected molded, it's brick tracks. Go check out their website. You can check it out on ours as well. Uh, they got all the information literature there on how their stuff is made, etc. Inform yourselves, it'll be worth it. Yeah. Especially if you're into the trains. Yeah, we've, we've been testing out a pretty giant layout in our uh, the GHQ mm -hmm. back room and um, it's pretty solid stuff. So. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've, it's seen, I've seen it used on quite a few other giant train displays, so it's pretty well established, so. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a stuff. cool company. We're excited to be a part of it. And you know, Dan is getting a lot of inspiration. You guys already saw that we had the wheels, the axles, and the wheel packs on, on BrickMania.com, and that's because we're gearing up to create locomotives and boxcars, and Lord knows what else. Just stay tuned, because it's gonna be epic. Epic. The trains, they are coming. Ding, 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 ding. Never, mind. Never mind, let's not even go there. Um, finally, last note, double wide track links. Got two boxes of them, which I believe is the rest of the batch, in the office this week. That should mean that the Bradleys, Abrams, etc., are heading out the door. Um, where, where it puts our standalone track links, is still kind of up in the air. Uh, we need to make sure that we have enough batches to actually put a significant quality on, quantity online. We don't really want to like, hey, the track links are back. You can get, you know, six, not individual track links, but like six packs of track links. That'd be a pretty lame launch. Sure. So we want to make sure that we've got enough in-house to have a significant batch go up online when we finally have the standalone. So stay tuned for that. But at least you people who are uh, uh, interested in where your pre-orders are, you know now that those double wide orders are on their way out the door, which is. We are making progress. Good to feel, yes, yeah. exactly. It's one of those things where I'm just excited for it to be behind us. <laughs> it is just surprising, like the uh, the amount of just behind the scenes that goes into getting a custom element produced mm -hmm. in a giant quantity. It's one thing to get a few hundred out, but when you're looking at a mass quantity, it really changes things up. You know, you need to have that mold survive for like a million pieces, kind mm -hmm. of thing. So, it's uh, it's got to be made right. So, yeah, it was it was definitely a process, but. The light is at the end of the tunnel, yeah. and we're feeling good about that, so you can too. Um, that covers everything that I have to say. Once again, remember, all month long, Operation Barbarossa, $15 off on BrickMania.com, packed with models, everything having to do with that. Red October, in full swing, two awesome new figures. The P39 still available on BrickMania.com. Um, you can go ahead and pick that up. As a matter of fact, I think most of our Russian stuff still has copies available online, so if you missed pre-Red October, September. These pre-orders are, yeah, right. If you miss pre-Red October pre-orders, you can still get in on everything that we got going on, which will be totally awesome. Make sure to take advantage of this book being discounted. And remember, we are having our Veterans Day sale. Our next Brick Mania sale will start up on November 4th. Landon, anything else to add? No, uh, thank you very much for tuning in.